Um, so, Honorable Judge Matthews, for the second time in six months, I find myself standing in front of a packed courtroom, a victim. This time, I'm here to address a different judge and the parents of the deeply disturbed teenager that murdered my son. This is my opportunity to try to describe just how much the horrific event that took place back on November 30th, 2021, has impacted my life. It's my belief that an impact statement should not just describe how this particular event impacted me. I feel that it should also be impactful towards all who hear it. And in your case, Judge, I hope these words impact you in a way that influence your decisions here today. As I look around at all the lawyers, police officers, media folks, and the other victims, I can't help but ask myself, what could I possibly say that this whole scenario doesn't already say? This is messed up. Most people will never have to make a victim impact statement throughout the course of their lives. And the fact that the victims speaking here today are doing so for the second time in six months should speak volumes in and of itself. This is not normal. Living a life like this is not normal. So how does it affect a normal guy? To be completely honest with you, it remains a rather difficult and uncomfortable question to answer. In my previous impact statement, I've expressed many of my day-to-day -day struggles from uncontrolled emotional outbreaks to sleepless nights to not being able to focus on the normal daily tasks. Yeah, it's fair to say that I live every day with pain, anger, heartache, regret, anxiety, stress, you name it. They are all there wreaking havoc in my once normal life. They say that time heals all wounds. Well, we're, we're coming up on two and a half years now and I can assure you that the wounds are still as fresh as they were on that tragic day. And with this hole that has been left in my life, still glaringly obvious, I fight every day to not lose more of myself within that very hole. I've spent the last 30 years of my life busting my butt to support a family, raise children, and try to set myself up for some peace and quiet in the golden years of life. But the unthinkable has happened. And that peace and quiet I've worked so hard for may never come to be. At least not to the degree that I've always imagined it. Literally every single aspect of my life has been affected by this tragedy. And I could spend a long time describing in detail just how it has impacted me, but it seems like it would be way easier for me to just tell you how this tragedy has impacted me, because there's simply nothing on that list. Now that the verdict is out on this monumental case, I feel strongly that it has caught the attention of most parents across the country. The overwhelming facts <coughs> in this case were all that was necessary to prove that James and Jennifer Crumley not only neglected their son by failing to get the necessary mental care that was clearly needed, but also <coughs> provided him the very tools necessary to carry out those heinous acts of violence. It was these very facts that allowed not just one, but two full juries to find both of them guilty of involuntary manslaughter. I will always maintain the opinion that the facts that were presented in these cases were strong enough to convince any jury of their guilt, and that the verdict would have been the same regardless of where the trial was held. As I have maintained throughout the course of the past couple of years, being the parent of a murdered child tends to cause you to seek out the maximum penalties allowed for each guilty verdict derived from any of the criminal charges. I think this stance is completely justified and would be so for any parent in, this position, in the same position as mine. However, this is a court of law where a person is innocent until proven guilty and the defendant has the right to dispute the facts of, of the charges against them. That being said, during the course of both of these trials, I did my best to capture every word and process all the facts. This is important because there is value in these facts, not just in the thousands and thousands of man hours invested in gathering, processing, and organizing the evidence, but also for being able to use that evidence to establish the cold, hard truth of this tragic situation, that James and Jennifer Crumley failed in their parental 
responsibilities as they pertain to the shooter who was their son. The cold truth that shows that they did nothing to address the obvious signs of the deteriorating mental state of mind clearly present within their son. And of course, the very hard truth that showed that they provided their son with exactly what he wanted to use to do what he did and failed miserably to secure it properly. One would probably think that in order for something like this, or something of this magnitude to even happen at all, there would have to be a ton of things that went wrong. Although, there were some things that definitely went wrong that day. For several of those things, I believe that if they had been handled correctly, we wouldn't be here right now. And James and Jennifer Crumley carry the bulk of the responsibility needed to handle those things. During their trials, the overall similarities between the two were evident. And I believe this is why they were both convicted. Numerous facts that were the same for both trials showed clearly that the parents failed their son and ultimately the entire community. With Jennifer, the thing that resonates most is that she stated that even knowing what she knew now, she still wouldn't have changed a thing. I almost died when she said that. Four precious lives were lost at the hands of her son by the means, by means that she helped provide. She saw the drawing of the murder drawn with the hands of her son. She sat and heard the request of the counselor and did nothing. And she still says, or says that she wouldn't have changed a thing. I just don't understand how someone can be that heartless to make a statement like that. The blood of our children is on your hands too. This is but one reason why I feel that Jennifer should receive the maximum amount of hurt for her sentence. The facts presented should be all the others that you should need. With her distinct lack of remorse and overall unethical understanding of the tragedy, I feel that the maximum amount of time available is needed for her to be able to fully comprehend the gravity of her actions and the lack thereof. With James, there were a couple of things that jumped out at me in particular, but one thing that is the toughest to digest is the fact that when the verdict was being read, he sat there and shook his head in total disagreement, as if to suggest that the jury was wrong and that there were no grounds for a guilty verdict. I was dumbfounded to see him shake his head with such disbelief, an action that only suggests that he truly believes he did nothing wrong. How could you possibly think that? Four precious lives were lost at the hands of your son by means that he helped, that he helped provide. He saw the drawing of the murder, drawn with the hands of the son. He sat and heard the request of the counselor and did nothing. I just don't understand how someone can so arrogantly dawdle in a pool of self-pity without being able to say one thing to justify themselves. The blood of our children is on your hands too. This is but one reason why I feel James should receive the maximum amount of for his sentence. The facts presented should be all the others that you need. With this distinct lack of remorse and overall unethical understanding of the tragedy, I feel that the maximum amount of time available is needed for him to be able to fully comprehend the gravity of his actions and the lack thereof. Throughout the course of all of this, and I'm talking from way back in the beginning, I just can't get over the fact that this tragedy was completely avoidable. There were some pretty obvious signs that were completely overlooked, and the bulk of the responsibilities to address those signs lied on the parents, and they failed. Across the board, failed. They willfully ignored the cries of their child and selfishly put themselves before helping him. This type of blatant disregard is undeniably unacceptable. It is a large reason why the events of the events of that day were able or were allowed to happen, and another reason why I feel they both need the maximum amount of time available to be able to fully comprehend the gravity of their actions and the lack thereof. We all know that having children is a big responsibility. Although extremely rewarding, it starts out pretty scary. 
I mean, let's face it, they don't exactly come with instructions. There's no mute button, and unfortunately, no pause or rewind buttons either. Oh yeah, and there are times in the beginning that they really smell. Yet we still have them. We still want that responsibility, even though it's not very clear what it all entails. But how can we accept that responsibility and not act responsibly towards that child? It doesn't add up. A child, even if she is an oopsie child, deserves the same amount of love, compassion, and compare that every other child gets. A child deserves someone who is confident enough to lead by example. Because let's face it, it wasn't that child's choice to come into this world. You made them, and it's your responsibility to teach them how to live. It's your responsibility to, get a, to set a good example. It's plain and simple, just like that, ladies and gentlemen. And the sooner we can figure, it out, figure that out, the better we all will be. Being a parent is hard work, but if it's done correctly, it can be the most rewarding work you ever do. There is no one that can tell you how to do it, because each child is so precious and unique. I mean, there's no other one like them in the entire world, and that says a lot. So cherish your one and onlys, and never give them up. Never give up on them, excuse me. The results of doing so can be catastrophic, and can affect the lives of so many other people. Well, I ask you all to go home today and hug your kids, and make sure they know you are there for them, and make sure that they are all right. It's so crucial for the whole of our society. Thank you.